Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Josiah Jidani. I'm a senior engineer in the ultrasonics research group of the CSIR. Uh, it's a privilege today to share some of the exciting work we're doing around innovative underwater imaging solutions. Specifically, I'll be talking about our work in synthetic aperture sonar imaging for high resolution underwater imaging on behalf of the rest of the team today. So the content of my presentation will be as follows. I'll give a brief introduction to synthetic aperture sonar and how it compares to other types of imaging, uh, sonar imaging techniques. I'll talk about briefly its limitations and challenges and the processing flow that is involved in synthetic aperture processing. And finally, I'll give some industrial applications of synthetic aperture sonar. Next, I will share the work we're currently doing in synthetic aperture sonar research and development, including the motivation for the research we're doing, as well as the objectives and what we hope to achieve and how far we've come in, in our research. I will then also proceed to share some of the results from our research in this area, specifically some images from synthetic aperture sonar prototype that we have developed. And then I will show how the system compares with existing sonar systems in the world. And then I'll round up the talk by presenting some current and future work uh, that is planned on the project. And then I'll finally conclude. Okay, so synthetic aperture sonar, um, for those unfamiliar with the term, sonar stands for sound navigation and ranging. And it traditionally describes the way submarines or un any other a Navy vessel uses sound waves to navigate and detect objects underwater. The term is derived from the terrestrial counterpart radar, which uses radio waves for detection and ranging uh, for objects above water. So synthetic aperture sonar, or SAS for short, is uh, inspired by its radar counterpart, synthetic aperture radar. The first SAS system was developed in the 1980s. As its name implies, it's a, the synthesis of a long aperture by combining data from a smaller physical aperture over multiple pings. So as illustrated in the diagram here, um, a synthetic aperture is formed by moving a smaller physical aperture in a straight line and intermittently in illuminating a region of interest with sound waves. Uh, a high resolution image can thereafter be formed by coherently combining the return echoes for along the synthetic aperture. The resulting SAS image is a representation of the three-dimensional acoustic reflectivity of the target region, um, or which is the seafloor, um, in a 2D coordinate system of range uh, and azimuth. So how does SAS compare to other imaging techniques? Uh, briefly, I'll describe two common sonar imaging schemes to describe what's unique about SAS. A common imaging technique is called the sector scan sonar, or the multi-beam sonar. And in this type of imaging, a number of acoustic sensors or transducers are arranged in a form to form a phased array. And by a process of beamforming, one is able to obtain a sector-shaped sonar image on a ping-by-ping -ping basis, as you can see in the diagram. The image here represents the acoustic reflectivity of whatever is placed, whatever object is placed in front of the sonar array in the coordinates of range and azimuth. As illustrated the, in the diagram, each sector uh, each segment of the sector in the azimuth direction is called a beam. Now, the thing in, in sector scan sonar, the beam resolution is limited and is dependent on the range and the design of the sonar sensor and the operating frequency. The azimuth resolution uh, depends on the beam resolution and the cross range and the range. So consequently, the farther uh, you try to image in range, the worse um, your azimuth resolution becomes. Um, and the range resolution depends on the speed of the propagation of, of speed of propagation of the sound waves and the bandwidth that's used um, during pinging. This is indeed the case for all forms of sonar imaging that use compressible pulses, uh, like the linear frequency modulated pulse. So the range resolution generally won't change uh, in this discussion. We'll primarily focus on um, the azimuth resolution because that's the differentiating property um, between SAS and these other types of imaging schemes. Um, the other sonar imaging scheme is the side scan sonar. And in this scheme, the sonar image is formed by stacking data from consecutive pings while the sonar moves along the straight path. It's similar to this sector scan uh, sonar in terms of the, the performance in resolution. 
Um, and the resolution in the long track direction depends on the size of this aperture used. So a large aperture is required in order to achieve a high long track resolution. And the challenge though of this is that there's a limit on how large you can actually make a physical aperture. Also, the long track resolution varies with frequency. A higher frequency re is required to achieve a higher long track resolution. And the challenge for thi of this is that higher frequencies are generally, uh, generally experience severe attenuation and therefore do not travel far uh, underwater. And just like sector scan sonar, the long track resolution degrades with range. The farther you go in range, the worse uh, the resolution becomes for a conventional side scan sonar. So synthetic aperture sonar addresses the challenges of limited resolution and range-dependent resolution in the previous imaging schemes by coherently combining multiple along track pings in imaginary aperture formed by the movement of the sonar. It can be shown that this process results in an along track resolution which is independent of range and independent of frequency. In fact, the along track resolution de becomes dependent only on the physical on the size of the physical aperture that is used in the data acquisition process. And this is what makes uh, synthetic aperture sonar an attractive imaging scheme. For some perspective on what is possible with synthetic aperture sonar imaging, here's an example of a, an, a sonar, uh, synthetic aperture sonar image of a sunken tow rope on the right hand side. And you can see that there's a remarkable resolution improvement from uh, the side scan sonar of the same object. Here's another image that illustrates the possibilities of uh, synthetic aperture sonar. Here we have uh, a sonar image of, a sunk, of some sunken cars obtained using a side scan sonar and a synthetic aperture sonar. Again, you could see that the SAS uh, image on the right provides significant clarity above the conventional side scan sonar. So although SAS is quite remarkable um, and an innovative solution, it does have some limitations and challenges. The limitation of SAS relates to the coverage rate, and this is the rate at which an area can be mapped. The first limit, limitation has to do with the maximum range that can be imaged. Apart from the signal-to-noise ratio, placing an, a limit on how far the sonar can image, the maximum range is also limited by the ping rate, or the pulse repetition frequency. With this limit, the faster you ping, the smaller the maximum allowable range, and vice versa. The second limit uh, relates to the Nyquist criteria for alias free reconstruction in the along track direction. This criteria simply limits the distance that the sonar can travel between pings, and this is generally accepted to be half the size of the physical aperture. The violation of this limit creates ghost images and replicas in the SAS image. So in order to overcome these uh, restrictions um, on the SAS coverage, most SAS systems today employ a single transmitter and a multiple receiver configuration. And this configuration effectively increases the size of your physical aperture, which relaxes the acquisition constraints, thus improving the coverage rate. Apart from the limitations of SAS, there are a number of challenges. One of the major challenges of SAS is um, navigation. And the important thing here is that the key to producing SAS uh, sharp SAS images is a knowledge of the position of the SAS to within fractions of a wavelength, typically within a tenth of a wavelength. And for this, accurate motion estimation strategies are necessary um, in order to be able to compensate for those unknown motion errors. Other challenges include uneven sea um, topography, uh, sea bottom topography, um, channel condition ambiguities, such as variations in propagation uh, speed of the sound waves, SAS platform stability, uh, multipath propagation, and also data storage and processing requirements. So this is just a brief rundown of the processing uh, flow for SAS imaging. You'll start with the SAS, raw SAS data, and we perform range compression in the range direction, also known as range compression. And then we perform and we carry out an estimate of the motion of the SAS in order to compensate for those unwanted motion errors. Um, and then depending on whether you use a straight line uh, along track compression or arbitrary along track compression, you would then either perform a series of motion compensation and a, a multiple receiver to single receiver reformatting. And um, finally, you would then have carry out a long track compression, which pro produces an initial SAS image. However, the, in order to improve the quality, 
An additional autofocusing step is performed on a number of, using a number of autofocusing techniques. And then there'll be a, an additional optional step of carrying out interferometry, um, but this would generally require, require a two parallel SAS arrays. So here are some of the ap industrial applications of synthetic aperture sonar. Basically, synthetic aperture sonar is quite suited to any industry that requires high underwater um, imaging um, so that you can image, get high resolution images of the seafloor. You could carry out small object uh, search for search and rescue operations or mine countermeasure operations. You could carry out pipeline inspections for underwater asset or any application that requires underwater asset management or survey. Um, there's also the aspect of marine archaeology for imaging of wrecks. Uh, there's also geological surveys and other applications of SAS like environmental monitoring. Um, and also there's ongoing research to applying synthetic aperture for gas seep detection underwater. Um, commercial and military applications of SAS are therefore quite varied and as AUV technology becomes mature, the ability to conduct underwater surveys which are humanly uh, at, in areas which are humanly impossible to reach will become more feasible. So now we come to the research and development of SAS at the CSRR and why we think this research is quite strategic. Uh, AUVs have become increasingly valuable for commercial and defense sector uh, in the def uh, commercial and the defense sectors from oil and gas uh, industry to the defense and security industry uh, to the mining industry. AUVs are basically pushing the boundaries of underwater exploration and with AUVs enabling a move away from traditional underwater vessels um, and with the advancement of computing technology, a new generation of sonar systems would be required. So in, antici in, in anticipation of this uh, need, um, this has led to the development of innovative piezo composite transducers at the CSRR as a first step on the path to the development of sonar systems of the future. So the main goal of this work is the development of a platform for the development of the various technologies and the capabilities that would be required for the next generation of sonar systems. Uh, this includes technologies such as wide bandwidth transducers, high-speed data acquisition, signal and image processing, data fusion for the fusion of multiple sources of data for robust sonar imagery, uh, systems engineering, um, and then testing and evaluation, taking a system from the laboratory uh, into the real world. And the platform will also serve to facilitate multidisciplinary research and innovation in the future. So this uh, project has been uh, an ongoing three-year project, and this is a chart of basically the progress uh, so far. We started in 2017 with a focus on laying the foundations uh, in the form of literature study and simulations. And then we went on to the development of a couple of prototypes to prove as a proof of concept. And then where we are, where we are today um, with the development of a full 32 um, element synthetic aperture sonar array that is rated to achieve a maximum range of 200 meters. And the, also the development of a dedicated transceiver as well as motion estimation and compensation algorithms. So here is a picture of the sonar demonstrator which we've been uh, successfully uh, developed and we are currently testing. The system operates at a center frequency of 225 kilohertz with a bandwidth of about 150 kilohertz. The system has about a 900 millimeter uh, 32 element receiver array with a range resolution of about 1.5 centimeters and a long track resolution of about four centimeters and a maximum range of about 200 millimeters at 1.5 meters a second. So this is just a chart show, showing the breakdown structure of the system. It's got three main components, as already described, the transducer array, the electronics, and the controller. Um, this is just a, a graph showing the interface diagram for, experimental, for the experimental setup. And here are some of the pictures showing the testing of the system in our underwater testing facility. Uh, the picture on the left here is the system uh, placed in the water tank. Um, the uh, electronics on the top right hand there and then the controller set up there. So I'll just briefly run through some of the imaging results we've obtained so far. We start with the simple imaging of simple objects. We have a five rung ladder. Um, you could see that the, f the ladder is immersed in water. It's got five rungs and you can see the five rungs. Uh, the verticals are barely visible due to specular reflection and some of the ghost um, 
images due to uncompensated motion. We've also got multipath returns. Um, um, also, we've also imaged a cylinder, and you can also see multipath returns there. We've also been able to image the pool leaf rake, and you can see the outline of the pool rake uh, with with the vertical there uh, showing. We've also we also went on to image. Uh, a bicycle just to also demonstrate the fact that you've got a high resolution so you can actually pick out the outline of, of the bicycle. And then we try to um, have some play around with trying to image an, the logo, the CSR logo made out of marble stuck onto a, a sheet of metal. So as I round up, we, if we compare the system so far with what we have uh, with other systems, we can see that our system is, pr uh, is, is quite competitive um, and, quite com and competes with other systems uh, around the world. And so what we're looking to the future is to carry out field testing uh, and to benchmark the performance of the system in the real world and also to carry out further optimization of the synthetic aperture sonar system and also improve um, the autofocusing capability and basically making the system more robust. So in conclusion, the synthetic, synthetic aperture sonar provides high-resolution sonar imaging through synthesis of a very large sonar aperture. The resolution of SAS images is independent of frequency and range. And SAS imaging has current and future, future applications in underwater surveys and inspections, underwater asset management, and, and defense. Um, I would like to thank uh, the South African Navy and Arms Corps, and as well as the CSIR for, for sponsoring uh, uh, this, this project. And that brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Okay, so from now I will take um, questions. Um, any questions I cannot answer at this point, um, you could send me an email. We could answer it uh, offline at a later stage. Um, those are my details also displayed on the screen. Thank you very much.